Hello and welcome to Box Office Receipts. I'm your host, Tyler Callahan, and we got the latest numbers to talk about, an update on The Matrix in China, as well as other news. Let's get to it. Staying in first place for the second weekend in a row is Encanto with another 12.7 million for a total of 57.9 million. In second place is Ghostbusters Afterlife with 10.3 million for a total of 102.2 million. In third place is House of Gucci with 6.7 million for a total of 33.6 million. Fourth place is Christmas with Chosen, which opened during the week and was distributed via Fathom Events, made 4.1 million for a total of 9 million. Fifth place was Eternals, which made 3.9 million for a total of 156.5 million. Also wanted to mention Sword Art Online Progressive, which opened in 10th place with 1.05 million. It's the latest anime film to get a theatrical release here in the States. And while that 1 million is not a lot at all, it was only shown in 840 theaters. But yeah, overall, it was a quiet week for the box office, and this seemed to be the week to go out and catch up on what you missed. Or it felt more like a specialized movies for the week. If you're an anime, you had Sword Art Online. If you are religious, you had Christmas with the Chosen. And if you somehow missed Dune and IMAX, well, this was their second chance to watch it. Next week, it'll start to pick back up with a West Side Story. However, interestingly, it will only be released in 2,800 theaters. For a film that has Disney's backing, that is shockingly not a lot, especially since it's being directed by Steven Spielberg. My only guess is simply a lot of theaters said no. Why? Well, Disney is notorious for their strong demands when playing their movies, like giving them two to three weeks of their best screens, bigger cut of the ticket sales, and so on. Usually, it's worth it for theaters to accept those terms because, well, if it's Star Wars or Marvel, it's almost guaranteed people will come in. The issue here is for them is, when Spider-Man comes out the following weekend and is distributed by Sony, and with the pre-sale numbers just going crazy, it's likely the theaters want to be flexible and keep as many screens open to add more showings of No Way Home. So if Disney enforced the same terms for West Side Story, theaters said no, and Disney did not negotiate. That would be your reason for a low theater count. Now, 2800 is still a decent amount, and you'll be able to find a theater by you playing it, but you know, movie opening around 2800 screens, that's, that's like during a pandemic, you know, last year, right, with those small movies, not a Steven Spielberg film. Also, to help it out, it will be getting IMAX screens for a week as well. It's just that it won't be playing in every theater across the country. Things were quiet again in China, opening in first place was Schemes and Antiques with 25.6 million. In second place was Be Somebody with 13.3 million for a total of 117 million. Third place was Your World Without Me, which opened with 3.1 million. And in fourth place was the door lock with 1.8 million for a total of 36.1 million. Fifth place was the battle at Lake Changjin with 1.7 million for a total of 897 million. For Hollywood films in China, we got one update with The Matrix uh, Resurrections getting a release date, and that is January 14th. While its release is confirmed, that is not a good date as pirated streams of the film will have been out for a few weeks thanks to HBO Max. So how much that will affect the box office, we will have to wait and see. As for No Way Home, it still does not have a date yet, so it's looking likely for a January release. Since it is also not going on streaming at the same time, its potential box office revenue should not be impacted much. Unless, worst case scenario, the movie is actually bad, fans hate it, and there's poor word of mouth. Unlikely, but that's a scenario where it could not make much money. Looking at worldwide numbers, Encanto made another $20.7 million for a worldwide total of 116.1 million. House of Gucci made 14.8 million for a worldwide total of 67.2 million. Venom Let There Be Carnage made 9.8 million thanks to an opening in Japan where it made 5.5 million. Right now it's going to be real close to finishing past 500 million with a total now of 483.2 million. Eternals made 5.8 million for a total of 384.3 million. Ghostbusters Afterlife is now at 145 million. Worldwide and Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City is at 24.3 million. Newswide in Hollywood it is busier than last week. Let's start off with the No Way Home hype as it has now gone international. Pre sale tickets have now opened up in a lot of countries, which also caused more site crashes and actually records being broken. Deadline broke this down, but in Mexico right now, pre sale tickets are 40% higher than Avengers Endgame. And in the UK, 
Sales at this point are three times higher than No Time to Die. So yeah, the weekend numbers for this are going to be fun to watch, but just because this is breaking records at pre-sales does not mean it will come close to Avengers Endgame numbers by the end of its run. We do have to factor in China, and right now, there is still no release date, for, and for it to get past $2 billion at least, it needs to show in China and do $250 minimum, ideally closer to $400 million. But I will say this, if the hype holds after the opening weekend, we're looking at a $1.5 billion finish, making it the highest grossing Spider-Man movie ever, uh, staying with Sony for a second while it is not a shock. It looks like Venom 3 is in development. Amy Pascal said during an interview with Collider that it is currently in the planning stages. While I noticed the less than expected theater count for West Side Story, the film will not be shown at all in certain Middle East countries. These include Qatar, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Kuwait, and a few others. Deadline has learned that the reason for this is because of a character in the film called Anybody. Current rumor online is that in the film, the character is transgender, and that is what caused the issue. Some countries did offer to approve the film if certain cuts were made. I'd assume most of anybody's scenes, but Disney refused to, like they did with Eternals, so it did not get approved. I don't have much to say about it since it's similar to the Eternals situation, but simply, yeah, good on Disney for not making the cuts, but also to be fair, are you really going to be a studio that censors a Steven Spielberg film? I don't think so. Next is an update on M. Night Shyamalan's next film, Knock on a Cabin, and that is Dave Bautista might be starring in it. Deadline has the exclusive on it, and right now he is in the middle of negotiations. It is unclear if he is the lead or supporting role, though considering the usual budget for these films, it's likely he'll be the main star. I'm a fan of Bautista, so while I usually don't get excited for Shyamalan films, I'll be looking to see how this turns out. We got another exclusive from Deadline, and that is we have an update on the Cleopatra film at Paramount. Patty Jenkins, who is set to direct the film, has stepped away from the position, and will instead produce it. Instead, Kari Sogaland has signed on to direct the film. She was pre previously directed the Falcon and the Winter Soldier series for Disney+. Plus. As for the reason Jenkins stepped away, it's mentioned that it was so she could focus on her other projects. It's not clear who pushed for this change, either Jenkins or the studio, but either way, I think it's for the best. At the start of this year, Jenkins was looking at doing three blockbuster films in what, a period of five to six years. We were all wondering what would come first, and with three different studios involved, who would have to wait? Now with Cleopatra out of the mix, it makes things a bit easier. Finally, we got a few new trailers this week. First was the new trailer for The Matrix Resurrections, which at least for now is still looking good. But the biggest news was a first look at Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, a highly anticipated sequel coming out next year. That dropped on Sunday with the announcement that it is a part one, and part two will be coming out the following October in 2023. So with everything said and done, the Spider-Verse movies will at least be a trilogy. I would also have to assume they knew this was going to be a two-parter early on and planned production around it because there's a lot of work to make an animated film. You can't just pump one out in a year, at least not with that animation quality Spider-Verse has gone so far. The first look did not reveal much, but it still looks great, and I'm hoping both movies end up as good as the first one. For VOD Premium, we got two stories. First, Netflix has released a trailer for a new Chainsaw Massacre film set to come out in February. Personally, I would not put too much faith in this one, as Legendary did make it, but then sold it to Netflix. There's a reason for that. And the second story is that Apple has confirmed that they will be producing a Bad Blood film. This is a film about Theranos CEO Elizabeth Holmes, with Jennifer Lawrence starring in the role, and Adam McKay directing. What's odd about this is Legendary did buy the rights to the film back in 2016, but it will now be co-producing with Apple. Not exactly sure what happened here. As for if the film will be good right now, well... You know, maybe. Adam McKay needs a hit, and it looks like he's still looking for it as reviews have started to come out for Don't Look Up, and are not that great. Anyway, that is it for this week's episode of Box Office Receipts. Question for the episode is, with Batista joining M. Night Shyamalan's next film, are you more or less excited for it? Let me know on Facebook. Link to the pages in the show notes. Thank you for listening.